What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Sanchez405 coming at you. It is on the warpath, y'all. And before we get started, hit a milestone yesterday, right? Yeah, because today's Monday. So Sunday, we hit the 700 mark. I think we're at like 701 right now. So I appreciate the love and support that you're giving the channel, that you're giving me. And let's not stop it. Let's keep this train all rolling. I hate, and like I always say, like these videos, comment, and if you haven't before, you stepped in and watched the video and you liked it, but you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you know you get notifications, because right now we're doing that Who Is series, and it is part, what are we, seven, eight, I don't know, but we're somewhere there, and today we're staying on the offensive side of the ball with the pin ultimate. The penultimate position on the offensive side of the ball. The tight ends coach, because we've got one more going, and it is Mr. Pete Honer. Been in the league for 20-some-odd years, 69 years old. Just turned 69, actually, I think. Yeah, just turned 69 yesterday. So maybe he was at 700 subscribers. I don't know. But anyway, in all seriousness, this guy has worked on the offensive lines in the NFL. He's worked with tight ends in the NFL. And he can take chicken mess and make chicken pizza, chicken salad, whatever you want to call it. But Pete Honer, graduate of Bradley College, played tight end linebacker there. Spent a lot of time in the college ranks from 75 to 99. He was a, a GA, an offensive line coach, an OC, and a running backs coach. He worked at Missouri, uh, Illinois State, Purdue, TCU, Iowa State. At Texas A&M there. He actually was in the NFL for two seasons in between those stays, though. Uh, he was with the St. Louis Cardinals, where he was a tight ends coach. But in 2001, he returned like Batman, and or he rose from the ashes and went to Phoenix. He went to Arizona, and he was a Cardinal again, and he was the tight ends coach, and the... They had garbage tight ends in uh, Arizona. Straight garbage. The offense was terrible. Josh McCown was god-awful there. Um, I think Jeff Blake was there for a little bit at, at twilight of his career. Uh, but anyway, Jake Plummer, too, uh, after they paid him all that money, that's the original Bernie Madoff in the NFL. Anyway, that's not a, that's neither here nor there. But um, tight ends co he was a tight ends coach. Worked with a young man, Freddie Jones, in 2002, who actually led the Cardinals in receptions, 44. So this was the first time in 2002 that a tight end had led the team in receptions since 1973. You do the math. I'm not. And then this was the first time, this was the most receptions by a tight 44. 44 was the most by an Arizona tight end since 1968. Trash tight ends. If y'all can find some more, just let me know. But um, Or correct me on that. And then in 2000, he was under Dave McGinnis. Uh, then he moved over to the offensive line for a year. Uh, didn't really fare that well. They had an aging. Uh, they had to protect for Josh McCown. Uh, had an aging... Um, Emmett Smith there, Marshall ship, ship was okay, uh, but anyway, uh, Leonard Davis, I think, was on that team. He was a, a tackle, and then he was a guard for the Cowboys later on in the, uh, like, in 07 and stuff. But anyway, whole staff got fired because they were trash uh, in Arizona. Then he moved to Chicago with Lovey Smith. There's your first connection, boys and girls. Who was the defensive coordinator? That's right, Ron Vera was the defensive coordinator in Chicago at the time. And with the Bears, he actually worked with Olin Cruz, who made a Pro Bowl. Olin Cruz was a good uh, ball. He was a baller anyway on the offensive line. Uh, several Pro Bowls in his career. And then in 2005, he went from Chicago. He went over there to the city by the bay in San Francisco. Mike Nolan uh, was the head coach, and he got to work. With uh, another connection, Jim Hostler, the current wide receivers coach, right? So, in that time, he got to work with this uh, draft pick out of Maryland. You might have heard of him, Vernon Davis, right? And Vernon Davis had his better 
See, this is what people fail to realize. Vernon Davis had better stats with Honer as his um, tight ends coach. Not when Jim Harbaugh was there. Uh, he led the league. I think he led the league in uh, touchdown reception in 2009. He had 13 there. Uh, 900 receiving yards, almost 1,078 receptions uh, back in 2009. But he worked with them. He worked with Delaney Walker as well out there in San Francisco. Uh, worked with Mike Singletary. So he was there for uh, six seasons from 05 to 2010. And then in uh, 2011, his buddy from Chicago, Ron Rivera, comes, hey, I need you to come and help me because I'm just i going to trade a third-round pick to Chicago and get this tied in there. Guy named Greg Olson, who only had uh, one season where he had uh, over 600 yards receiving. No, but Honor did. That's right. He turned him into Greg Olson. Y'all know now, the one that we know right now. Um, Greg Olson worked with him. Uh, first, he became the first tight end to lead the Panthers in receiving with 73 receptions in 2013. Had 800 yards, 6 touchdowns. 2014, he made his first Pro Bowl. Led the Panthers in reception. You see a theme here. Four 100-yard um, games that season. And that was a Panthers record, I think, by any tight end. Maybe even a, a wide receiver as well. I'm not sure, but you might have to check me on that one. But, uh, and then 2015, he had a career year. So did Cam Newton, who was the MVP, right? 1,100 yards receiving, uh, 75 receptions. And then in 2016, he had his third consecutive 1,000-yard season, uh, a high, a team high of 80 receptions, made the second team all-pro team. Um, you know, so it, 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 this is, I mean, y'all, I've talked about this before. I'm not going to panic about the tight end room. Yes, we've got Logan Thomas. Yes, we've got Thaddeus Moss coming in. Yes, we've got Brian Spr uh, we've got uh Jeremy Sprinkle. Yes, I know he can't catch a cold. I know he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. But still, Pete Honer dude can do some things with tight ends. You look at Delaney Walker. He was second fiddle. Then he started coming on, right? And uh he, when he was in there and said, with San Francisco, he was always second fiddle. But when he went to Tennessee, he showed that he could blossom because he wasn't he wasn't robbing to somebody's Batman like Vernon Davis, right? So I think we're going to be okay at the tight end position. I That's the reason why I don't think they went out and spent the farm on uh, Hooper. I, I don't think so. And uh, we got the talent there. I think Honer can bring it out of me. I really do. I know I've said this about all these coaches so far, but I'm not concerned. They've got a professional that can lead that room and can help them develop. Um, you know, the fun fact is the Redskins and Panthers really swap tight ends coaches. I would take Pete Honer over Brian Angelicchio or whatever his name was uh, in a heartbeat. I would. Dude, hey, look at the track record. Look at Brian's. Look at Pete. He's got the tight ends, y'all. But, hey, that is that is Pete Honer, the tight ends coach for the Washington Redskins. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. I know y'all are worried. We are all worried about this tight end room. It's fine. It's okay to worry about it. But I think they're going to be in good hands, though. This dude, this cat's got it. But comment, like, share this video out if you can. As always, I appreciate you guys. And I love you. You know that, right? And, and I'm saying child 405. And what do we say here on the channel every time? Love, peace, and hell, y'all. And I'll be talking to you real soon. I'm out!